Hello and welcome back to AP Computer Science Principles. I am Mr. Cunningham and today we are going to expand what we can do with binary representation of numbers a little bit. Up until this point, we've really only used binary to represent whole positive numbers. But of course, just like any system of math, this system is so much more than that. So let's start simple. Let's talk about what if we wanted to make some negative numbers. If we wanted to represent, say, for example, negative 27, okay? In order to do that, we have to set up some new rules for binary, and that brings me to one of my most important points here. The ones and zeros that we've been working on throughout this course so far don't have any inherent meaning on their own. They only have meaning when you run them through a computer that then translates them back into numbers or text or pictures or whatever. So if we want to represent a negative number, we are going to have to come up with a rule for how to represent negative numbers. So we're going to say that for the purposes of this video, the very first bit in a number will determine positive or negative status, and if that first bit is a one, then the number is positive. If that first bit is a zero, then the number is negative. So, in order to make negative 27, well, the first thing we gotta do is just make 27, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got my place values, I've got my numbers all set up, I just need to figure out how to make 27. Let's see, 16 plus 8 is 24. Another 4 would get us to 28, so that's too many. 24, 25, 26, and 27. So 11011 is 27. To make it negative, we would put another bit in the front that is a zero in order to denote that that is actually negative 27. Now, not all computers are going to read this zero as a negative sign. It depends on what computer you're working on, what language it's using, and what rules you've set. That's the part about computer science that's so confusing for a lot of folks. Unlike, for example, math, a lot of these rules are not standardized across programming languages. You have to figure out what your programming language uses and go with that. So now let's look about numbers that are not whole numbers, rational numbers. Now, you might wonder why I'm saying rational numbers specifically and not like decimals or fractions. And the answer is you cannot actually accurately represent irrational numbers in binary. And the reason for that is that all computers have some limit on how many bits they can hold, how many bits they can process. Okay, so here we've got a number that might be in decimal or it might be in binary. We're not really sure yet, but you will notice that it is not a whole number because it has a decimal point and then more values after the decimal point. Now, in binary, again, everything is ones and zeros, so we would have to find some way to represent this decimal point in binary so that a computer could read it, but we're gonna skip past that for now and just talk about the number itself. So let's say for the moment that this number is in base 10, right? It is 1100.101. Now we already know that this is the ones place or the 10 to the zero place. Again, anything to the zero other than zero is one. This is the tens place, 10 to the first, the 100s place, 10 to the second, the thousands place, 10 to the third. Now, if you follow this pattern down, it should be pretty easy to see that the next value, the next place value after the decimal, will be 10 to the negative one, which is the same thing as one tenth. This is the one, this is the tenths spot. Whereas this is 10 to the negative two or one one hundredth. 10 to the negative three is one one thousandth. And that's how the decimal system works. And once again, the binary system works almost exactly the same, except instead of a bunch of tens, there's a bunch of twos. So here we see the same number in binary, except once again, instead of this being the thousands place, 10 to the third, this is the eight place, two to the third. We've already talked a lot about that, but the pattern continues after the decimal point. 
So this spot here is no longer the tenths spot, it is the one half spot. This zero here is in the one fourth spot. This one here is in the one eighth spot. We are still able to represent any number so long as it's rational using binary just like we can with decimal. But again, just like with decimal, we can't just keep going forever. If there is an irrational number that we want to write down, we are going to have to at some point round it off. And that's a big part of this video as well as our next exercise set. So in order to do this, the first thing I did was I translated from fractions into decimals, right? Instead of one half, I put 0.5. Instead of one fourth, I put 0.25. One eighth is 0.125, etc. So in order to figure out what number this is, I just have to figure out what place values I have and add them all up as usual. We've got one two to the third, which is eight. We've got a two squared, which is four. We do not have a two to the first or a two to the zero. Both of those values are zero. So after the decimal point, we have that other one in the 0.5 space, so 0 0.5. There is nothing in the 0 0.25 space, but there is a one in the 0 0.125 space. In order to translate this into decimal, we just have to take all four of these and add them together. Eight and four is 12, 0 0.5 and 0 0.125 is 0.625. So our number in decimal is 12.625. Now, it's not likely you're going to have to do a whole lot of translating from decimal to binary when it comes to non-whole numbers, even on the AP exam, but it is important to note that this does create some limitations which are going to be important. Imagine for a moment that I was going to write out an irrational number like pi using our normal ordinary digit system. Right? I start with 3.14159, and then at some point, I'm either going to run out of space or I'm going to get tired of writing. We all know that the decimal points behind pi or any irrational number keep going forever and ever and ever. There is no way that we can write the answer perfectly, right? We cannot write pi with perfect accuracy because even if I continue to write numbers for the rest of my life, I will never be able to hit the infinite number of digits that happen after the decimal point with pi. It's the same thing with a computer trying to represent a number in binary. There is only so many bits to go around. Now, today's computers have trillions, quadrillions of bits ready to go, but there is still a limit somewhere. And for example, in very old school calculators, if you tried to do a very, very large number, like a million times a million or something like that, a lot of the time it'll just give you an error. And that's because the simpler a computer, the fewer bits that it has to represent numbers. And that can go in either direction. Now we've already talked about how if you have a limited number of bits, then there is a limit to how big your number can get, right? We can put ones in every single place value. And if this is the maximum number of bits that we are allowed, this is the biggest number that we can create. And just like with those old school calculators, if I try to make a number that's bigger than my number of bits can handle, we get an error. And that error is called an overflow error. An overflow error happens when a computer is trying to make a number that's bigger than it can handle. When it, the number it's trying to make would require more bits than the computer has allotted for that number. When this happens, you're either going to get an error message, which is specifically an overflow error, or it might just maybe cycle around back to the beginning, giving you a completely inaccurate answer. This is going to come up on Khan Academy. So anytime you are trying to make a number that is bigger than your computer can handle, that is an overflow error. Now, because we're talking about very large numbers, we're specifically talking about bits to the left of our number. Remember, the further left you go, the larger the value. But what if we run out of space on the right side here? Not only, not only, can bits in a computer only represent numbers that are so large, they can also only make numbers so accurate. 
This is called a rounding error. If an overflow error happens when a computer tries to represent a number that's too big, a rounding error occurs when a computer can't quite accurately represent the number it's looking for because it doesn't have enough bits after the decimal point. As such, the computer has to round. And because the computer doesn't necessarily have perfect rules when it comes to rounding, you may end up getting weird or unexpected results. So again, this is gonna come up on Khan Academy. Generally speaking, if you end up with a number that has a decimal part that gets really weird for some reason, it's probably a rounding error because the computer did not have enough bits after the decimal point to make that number accurately enough. Okay, a couple of examples before we finish up this video. What if we wanted to put 13.75 in binary? Well, just like with decimal numbers, the place where we kind of center our efforts is the decimal point. To the left of the decimal point, we have one, two, four, and eight, same as always. And then to the right, we've got one half, which is the same thing as 0.5 and one fourth, which is the same thing as 0.25. We could keep going, but I don't think we're going to need to. So let's go ahead and split this up into two pieces, the whole number part, and then the sort of partial number part, the decimal part as it were. Well, we've done this a bunch of times so far. 13 is eight, plus four is 12, plus one is 13. We've got all of our numbers in order. So we put a zero in any place values that we didn't use. And then finally, 0.75 is indeed 0.5 plus 0.25. So 13.75 in binary is 1101.11. Let's do one more and then we'll finish up. Okay, so for this next example problem, we are going to assume that the first bit determines the sign of the number rather than adding value to the number itself. So the very first bit, if it's a zero, the number is negative. If it's a one, the number is positive. Okay, again, the only reason this works is because I told you at the beginning of the problem that this is how it works. Otherwise, you wouldn't know that the first bit was supposed to represent positive or negative. So we're gonna go ahead and section off that first bit. And because it is a one, that means the number that follows is positive. After that, the rest of it falls exactly the same as before. This is the one spot, the two spot, and the four spot. This is the one-half spot and the one-fourth spot. So our final answer is four plus zero plus one is five. Point, well, there is no one-half, but there is a one-fourth, which is 0.25. So the answer is 5.25. And again, it is positive 5.25 because the very first bit is a one, which in this particular problem for this particular example means that the number that follows is positive. Again, I cannot overstate this. You have to know what the rules are for the problem you are working on before you are able to get a correct answer. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video on rational numbers in binary. If you have any questions, and I imagine you will after this one, please do leave them in the comments. I will do my best to respond to each one. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.